This is Ohio Harness Update, a look at harness racing across the Buckeye State. Ohio Harness Update is brought to you by Matt Franklin, Wealth Advisor at Wire to Wire Wealth. The Grand Circuit returned to the Buckeye State with the 38th edition of the Battle of Lake Erie at MGM Northfield Park. The third time was a charm for Little Rocket Man as he went four wide around the final turn to win this year's battle. To three quarters they go in 123 by the missile steps on the gas. Chris Page asks them to finish the job by the missile into the far turn with the lead. Coach's corner three wide. Little Rocket Man is revving up four wide. Desperate Man still within the thick of things. Then line drive Hanover Carbine wide open at the top of the stretch as they gang up on the missile. By the missiles off the turn with the lead. Here comes Little Rocket Man who's storming home down the center. Down at the inside is Coach's corner, but it's Little Rocket Man at 20 to 1. A triumph in his third battle start in 152-4. and four. What a race. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, man. How special is this horse? Oh, dude, this, this is huge for me, man. I, I couldn't, I mean, I dreamed this last night, and it never factored the way I thought it would, but the end result was what I hoped for. What did the, What was the dream? How did you think you were going to win it? I honestly thought Carbide would pay dearly to get to the lead, and I thought he'd end up on the front, the fractions would be super hot, and really they wasn't. But this little horse, he just has no quit. No quit. Hell of a race by uh, Little Rocket Man. He's unbelievable. <laughs> he is unbelievable. He does. He never does it. Never has a bad start. Now Jeremy said he dreamed this was going to happen, but not that. Not the way it did happen. <laughs> what was your dream last night? Did you think it would uh, come this way? Well, I thought we'd have wicked fractions, and I thought they kind of lined up pretty soft. I thought we we're in trouble, but it just. You don't see too many horses go four wide here and win, but he, he just, he's unbelievable. <laughs> it seems he just keeps doing things special every now, every, just continues to do that. He, he loves his job. He really does. He's a special, special horse and just owners are great. And this horse has just been a pleasure to be around his whole life. What's it mean to finally win this race? Oh, it's, it's pretty special. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. El Dorado Saudi Downs hosted the $150,000 Next Generation for Ohio Sire two-year-olds. Four divisions went behind the gate. The Word is Out won the division for Philly Pacers with an impressive closing effort. Philly, the Word is Out is digging in and tracking her down. Queen of Fear, the Word is Out on the outside. The Word is Out will win the next generation. From Queen of Fear, Maddie's Delight and Prolific Fire, 152-2. Aunt Lily went wire to wire in the Philly trotting division. And it's Aunt Lily with a commanding lead into the stretch, trying to track her down, mega money and up, but it is all Aunt Lily and Anthony McDonald. They'll win the next generation two-year-old Philly trot. Aunt Lily from Mega Money, Rose Run, Allison, and Strawberry Hill, 157 and 2. The next generation Colts were on fire, What's Shaking set a new stakes record in 155 and 4 for Trotters? What's Shaking coming on and coming at him inside Rose Run Ari digs in. What's Shaking on the outside? Ronnie Gillespie and What's Shaking in the next generation? 155 and 4. That's a stakes record. And the final division for Pacing Colts went to Swingtown in an easy victory. Swing town on the outside under a very confident hand drive goes right by and he will draw clear to win the next generation to your old Colton Gelding pace. Up second down by the parade from Dave Dragon and riding the waves 153. The Ohio Sire Stakes continued for three-year-olds. Clever Cody remained undefeated in the division for sophomore pacing Colts. Into the stretch is Clever Cody with the lead. He digs in from the challenge. Rock the Hill closing late. Clever Cody hangs on to win it from Rock the Hill, Outer Banks, and Rose Run Zane, 150 and 2. Seaside Diva also remained perfect in the OSS for sophomore Philly Pacers. They turn for home, wasted on you, pops the deuce. Seaside Diva has the lead, the two favorites go at it. Seaside Diva drifting in, but she's still in front, wasted on you, is not gaining. Seaside Diva back to her winning way. She's three for three in the Sire Stakes. Last year's Colt Trotter of the Year, Tennessee Tom, has won two of three OSS legs. 
back into the stretch, and Tennessee Tom has taken over. Hung over is digging in. Outside, Sponzano with late trot. He passed to the inside as they come to the wire. Tennessee Tom under a hand drive. Tennessee Tom from Sponzano and hung over 153. Sugar Instead and Jurassic Hattie met at MGM Northfield Park for the long overdue showdown. Both three-year-old trotting fillies had won two sire stakes legs, but it was Sugar Instead who came out on top in leg three. Sugar Instead, the two-year-old champ, wins again. Jurassic Hattie second, Roxana third, 155-3. Freshman Pacers kicked off the Ohio Sire Stakes action for two-year-olds in July at El Dorado Sayota Downs. Two Ron Burke trainees are undefeated in the division for Colt Pacers. Rick Wink set a lifetime mark in the first leg. Rick Wink, pants on fire on the outside to the wire. Very tight photo for win, 152-1. and one. Not to be outdone by his stablemate, Swingtown also set his mark in the opening leg. It's Copper Penny outside, Swingtown still coming. Copper Penny, Swingtown, Swingtown on the outside. From Copper Penny, what you gonna do? And Bossa Nova Star, 152 and 1. For Colt Trotters, Lieutenant Loverboy is 2 for 2 in the Sire Stakes. It's LT Lover Boy. Caviar Creek trying to battle back. What a buckeye in the passing lane. Kicks and gears. They drive for the wire. LT Lover Boy. What a buckeye. Closing goes off stride. LT Lover Boy to win it from What a Buckeye. Caviar Creek and Rose Run Arch. 156 and 1. The Philly Pacer odds on Hialeah has won both of her legs. They swing for home. Odds on Hialeah down the center trying to get Queen of Fear. Queen of Fear just in front. Odds on Hialeah is on the outside. Odds on Hialeah witching blue chip. Odds on Hialeah and witching blue chip 1-2 for the third straight start in 154 and 3. And Boca Hill has won both of the OSS legs for trotting fillies. Mocha Hill grabs the lead at the top of the stretch. Mocha Hill is widening away. The battle's for second, Aunt Lily, and up, but it's Mocha Hill in front. Mocha Hill beats Sienna Sunrise, then Aunt Lily, and up, who may have been off stride at the wire in 158 and 1. The second leg of the Buckeye Stallion Series wrapped up in June. Five horses became two time winners in the series. In the three year old Colt Pacing Division, there were two repeat winners. The first to win their second BSS race of the year was Dancing Moon. As they come to the top of the stretch, Dancing Moon's all alone for the final 100 yards. Dancing Moon and Jeremy Smith go down the road. They'll win by about six in the end. Then it's Wireless Caller and Fancy Feet, 154-1. and one. Later in the card, what in Ocean View won for the second time in the series. They come to the top of the stretch, and what an ocean view has something left and opens up two and a half as Paige goes to work on what an ocean view. Uh, Seaside Delight is second, but no one's got what an ocean view. Give Chris Page a fourth on the program. He tees it up for a big night. Then Seaside Delight and Seaside Escape 156. In the Philly trot division, it was Estiso who doubled up. Home run queen tries to seal the deal. The lead a length and a half. Estiso trying to parlay the perfect trip. Down at the inside, Sister Wives is taking third. Three wide, Champa Bay Hall. Then Phyllis L. They turn four home. Home run queen's off the turn with the lead, but here comes leg one winner, Estiso, down the center. Estiso and home run queen down to the finish. Estiso to remain perfect in the Buckeye Stallion. Then home run queen, Sister Wives, and Uncle Pete's Dream, 158-3. and three. Tom Swifty became a two-time Buckeye Stallion Series winner in the Colt Trotting Division. Into the stretch, Mr. WWC gives way to Tom Swifty, who takes over the lead when I'm gone. Us is driving up on the outside, coming to the wire. It's Tom Swifty. He'll win it for homes for families. Tom Swifty from when I'm gone. Us, Mr. WWC, and what a con fourth, 155 and three. And in the Philly pacing division, it was Fearless Ginger repeating. Eight of a mile to go. They come into the stretch and battle for the lead. Alton moving on the outside, three wide in the stretch. Comes to rock your wings. But there's no doubt about this one. And drawing away with every stride, it's Fearless Ginger. Hot shave. Frontier Dragon. Rock your wings. One, 51, two fifths. The Ohio County Fair racing season kicked off at Paulding. The first race of the year was won by Jewel Said. 
as they race to the ring. That's Jewel Sand. And really, are you kidding me? It's going to be Jewel Sand. And here they all come. Up for places. Really? Are you kidding me? Quite tight for third there between Allison L. and Sparkling C. It didn't take long for the first record to be broken at a fair. Tulsa Bell set a new trotting mark at Paulding, winning the Signature Series in 159. Both the pacing and trotting records were broken at Wilmington. Cyclone Union Jack set a new pacing track record in 154-3. and three. A line of stone set a new trotting record in 157 and 4. Smooth Talkin' lowered the trotting record at Bell Fountain to 159 and 3. Starflower equaled the trotting mark at Lebanon in 159. Drinking My Baby Goodbye equaled the pacing record at Mount Vernon in 157. Global Girls set a new trotting record at Painesville in 159 and 2. Both records fell at Bowling Green. Surf in the Canyon broke the pacing mark in 157 and 2. And Stony Ridgetop set the new trotting mark in 2 minutes. Finally, Varum and Vani won at Wapakoneta, lowering the trotting record to 159. There were other milestones on the track. Tony Hall crossed the $70 million mark in purse earnings. David Lake hit the $10 million plateau for purse earnings when he drove Prince of Bel Air to victory at MGM Northfield Park. Prince of Bel Air has the lead. Expresso Joe on the outside. Prince of Bel Air is almost home, and Prince of Bel Air will win at 7 1. Then Expresso Joe and East Beach, 155 and 3. Four drivers picked up their first wins. Joe Cramp recorded his first parabutual win at MGM Northfield Park. Enforce the law, looks for the passing lane with Colin, then Swan on a mission. Some more Prince narrowly. Here comes Colin and enforce the law. Enforce the law or Colin, enforce the law in front. Curtis Harper won his first career race when he drove its Miller time to victory at the Paulding County Fair. As they race for home, that's Fond of Dancing Center Story, and it's Miller time. It's Miller time on the outside, tight at the wind, tight at the wire between it's Miller time and Fond of Dancing. Cameron Keena scored his first driving victory at the Ottawa County Fair in Oak Harbor aboard Catch Me Conrad. Kiss me, Conrad, and Lions friends. It's going to be Kiss me, Conrad, and here they all come. Stacy Curry picked up her first driving win at the Green County Fair in Xenia with Hang On Cowgirl. Hang On Cowgirl digs in once again on the outside. Here comes Poof Daddy. Here they all come. Five across the track on the inside. Hello, Valley Boo. Who's going to be on the outside closing in with every stride? Getting the win. On the training side, Madison Hess recorded her first training win at Northfield Park with Patty Murphy. Patty Murphy still in front. Winner is coming on the outsides. Not by yet. Patty Murphy winner is coming one final time. That's tight. I think it's Patty Murphy, though. When we return, we will have our trainer spotlight, and it's been a busy summer for the OHHA outreach team. With over 30 years of experience in wealth planning and a lifetime of involvement in harness racing, Matt Franklin at Wire to Wire Wealth can help you build a financial plan that addresses the unique circumstances of those involved in the horse racing industry. Whether you are investing to build wealth, protect your family, or preserve your assets, Matt at Wire to Wire Wealth will work with you through the wealth planning process from start to finish. Welcome back to Ohio Harness Update, joined now by Dan Veneer for our trainer spotlight this month. And Dan, you've been doing this for a while, haven't you? About 45 years. Yeah. How'd you get into the business? Um, I had barrel horses, and a friend of my dad's had a standard bread, and we went to watch it at Jackson Raceway, and he finished second and made like 200 bucks. And I got rid of that barrel horse, and I said, man, that's the way to go. <laughs> Gotta get me a racehorse. Well, now, originally from Michigan, you now call Ohio home. Yep, we moved here in like 2001. Why? Um, Michigan program wasn't looking good. Uh, I love the Ohio fairs. Um, we have a business in Perrysburg, so I needed something close, closer to the business, and it turned out it was in Pemberville, Ohio. Now, how big of a stable do you have right now? I have seven in training. Seven in training, and you go from the stars, Rose Run Zane, to... The baby's just starting here. Let's first talk about Rose Run Zane. What, what makes that horse so special? He, he's just one of those good horses that you get once in a great while. 
Um, he's he's just he's intelligent. He takes care of himself. He's got ability. Uh, he's just been a, one of those good horses. Don't like to put people on the spot. Best one you ever trained, though. I would have to say, yeah. And then we also have today here at Paulding, the first day of the fair, you've got a really special horse in uh, today. Tell us a little bit about this one. Um, I bought a, I, I've always wanted a Mach 3 broodmare, and I bought her, and shortly after I bought her, she got kicked and broke her front leg. And we should have put her down, but my wife was a, said, no way. we got to give it a shot. So we put her in a sling, uh, doctored her for like six months in a sling, and then another three, four months of rehabilitation, and then we bred her. And we have our first foal here today, a Racing Hill filly. Success just to get the foal to the track. Yeah, it was. Just to get her to have a foal. Now let's talk a little bit about the year you're having so far. Your best year ever as a trainer was last year. You made $182,000 in earnings. You're already at 179 doing this interview midway through, you know, the month of uh, June. So it's going to be your best year ever. I, I hope so. You know, if I can just keep Zane um, sound and healthy for the rest of the year, it's going to be a really good year. Is this where you want to be about seven horses in the stable, or do you want to grow the stable even more? No, I, I like four. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I've, I've always had like three or four horses. Um, I just got a little crazy last year at the yearling sale. The, the one that I wanted was late. It was the last sale. Um, so... On the previous sales, it's like I like some really, but it's like, no, I'm going to wait till the end, and then I couldn't get the one at the end. So this sale, I liked a couple early. I got them, and then I also got the one that I liked. So here we are. So Do you make the decisions on the one you buy, or do you get some help from uh, the other half of the family? Um, that's pretty much all me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dan, good luck the Except rest of the... Except for the number. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the number, she has a lot of say. Like... I almost, I almost got four, and she's like, "If you would have got four, uh, we would have been divorced." You know, so it's tight, tight with the purse strings. Uh, just, just the work. Yeah. <laughs> just, just. Well, good luck the rest of the year, Dan. All right, thank you very much. The Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association sponsored two charity nights in the month of June. The first was held at MGM Northfield Park. Nine charities were matched with a horse. The winning combination took home the $10,000 first prize, with second place receiving $5,000 and third place receiving a $3,000 donation. The other charities all received $2,000 donations. Dan Noble drove Clearly Dreamy to the win for By Dawn's Early Light, a charity that makes positive impacts and helps to bring normalcy to a foster child's life that is directly affected by addiction. By Dawn's Early Light, our big winner here at Charity Night at Northfield Park. And Dawn, you were just ecstatic. <laughs> oh my God, yes I was. I'm still in tears. I'm still in shock. I'm still, I just want to jump. <laughs> I want to jump for joy some more. Well, wait a minute. Jumping, that was your role in that one. <laughs> you took a leap up into the stands. That was unbelievable. <laughs> yes. I, I, I was probably a little too excited, but we've been waiting a while for this, and I'm excited we finally pulled it off tonight. What does $10,000 do for your charity? Uh, we have 3,800 plus children on our on our roster, so we could do so much between helping them with sporting, with the pay-to-play sporting, um, with the registration fees, birthday presents, Christmas present, diapers, hygiene items for those aging out of the foster care. We help with them. Um, things for an apartment and we just we do so much and this is just going to make so many people smile this is going to go a long way oh it definitely is we're going to have so many children actually be able to be a child because of this john what was going through your mind as they turned down the stretch coming home and clearly dreamy wasn't in the lead yet no he was sitting in the pocket for a while which i guess you know is a good strategy and i was like just please come out don't get stuck there come out and go for it and he did and you know he pulled through at the last second it was great well congratulations by dawn's early light our big winner here at northfield park clearly dreaming is owned by rod allums jr who has 11 adopted siblings all stemming from foster care Sometimes our charity night, things are just meant to be, and that's what happened tonight with the Dawn's Early Light and Clearly Dreaming, joined now by Rod Allums Jr., the owner of Clearly Dreaming. And when we did the live draw, you immediately called your mother when you found out who Clearly Dreaming was teamed with, didn't you? Yeah, I did. It was a weird coincidence, and uh, I kind of thought it was going to be a, a different one and then we ended up with this charity and it was just just weird why was it so weird tell the story 
So I've got a bunch of siblings that have come from foster care and uh, my mom has adopted and uh, that's kind of our story right now. Um, they range from ages 0 to 13 and the oldest one is 20, about to be 21. So it's pretty uh, neat that we paired up with them. And Sheila, when you got the call saying, hey, did you watch the live draw? You were like, no, what's going on? Right. What, and then when you did, what went through your mind? Weird. It was just crazy because it's just kind of ironic that that's the one that we drew for the night. And then she wins, which is even better. So, you know, this is a great charity. This is what I do every day. So, Why do you do it? I do it for the kids. I don't do it for me because, believe me, my life would be easier without doing it all the time. However, it is probably the best, most rewarding thing just to have their happy little faces all the time. And, you know, they are great kids and they are in bad situations. And if more people did it, we would have less of this. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? We've been only doing this for about nine years. And we've acquired a lot of kids. So we have total all of our kids. We have 18 kids. And it's been amazing. It takes a special person to do that, doesn't it? You know, it just takes somebody who's willing to put forth the effort. That's it. It really is not anything special. You just got to be willing to put forth the effort. Well, sometimes it just works out the right way at charity night, and it certainly did tonight. Less than a week later, the OHHA's second charity night was held, this time at El Dorado Sayota Downs. Dan Noble did it again, this time driving Tom Swifty to victory for Home for Families, which provides homeless prevention and rehousing, education, and stability programming to improve the health and well-being of families, youth, and the Columbus community. Holly, what went through your mind as Tom Swifty was coming down the stretch to that finish line? Oh my goodness, the moment I met T. Swifty, oh my goodness, we went to go meet him and he was just a special horse. I mean, he was just so calm. And then I just knew once he got on the track that he was going to fight for us. Yes, he was a special one. What does $10,000 do for your organization? $10,000 does a lot for our organization. We are homes for families, and so this will provide many um, first and last month's rent for people that are suffering from homelessness. It, we can put together all types of care packages for, for our um, mothers and families that are less fortunate and things of that nature, so it's, we're definitely grateful for that great night to have all yes. your supporters out yes. here and just <laughs> did you enjoy yourself i enjoyed myself yes i think i was the loudest one <laughs> on the track <laughs> yes for sure congratulations thank you so much a pleasure thank you for having thank us you. charity night wasn't the only big event at sayota downs in june the track also hosted wiener dog races a big crowd was on hand as about 30 dogs took part Two divisions lined up, with the winners being named top dogs. The OHHA also hosted high school-age students from the Farm Bureau's Explorer Ag program. The day started at Winter Circle Training Center, where the students got hands-on experience helping with the care of horses. Following lunch, they headed to Midland Acres, where they toured the farm and learned about the breeding industry. They wrapped up the day at Sayota Downs, where they took rides in the starting gate, and had dinner. Over 35,000 people were introduced to Ohio harness racing when the OHHA attended Briar Fest in Lexington, Kentucky. This annual event brings horse lovers from all over the world together. Attendees of all ages drove a virtual racehorse, wrapped legs, and learned more about the breed through demonstrations by Ohio Standard Bread and Friends. Congratulations to our Grooms of the Month for June and July. Our June grooms are Arlana Bolin and Eric Schwartz. Our July grooms are Uriah Miller and Sandra Schwartz. That wraps up our summer newsletter. If you would like to become a member of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association, visit our website at OHHA.com. For the entire OHHA team, I'm Frank Froz. This has been Ohio Harness Update. Ohio Harness Update is brought to you by Matt Franklin, Wealth Advisor at Wire to Wire Wealth. This has been a production of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association.